o kiore e hoa, hare mai, come and join me. I've got a fabulous book for us, especially if you like reading books, and even if you don't like reading books. Do you like reading books? I love it. This is the book Penelope Popple and the Boring Books. It's written by Monique Rowe and it's illustrated by Polly Rabbits. Are you nice and comfy? Ready for a story? Oh, let's begin. Penelope Popple was bored. Bored with her toys. Bored with her room. Bored with her bike, which still had training wheels even though she was almost a grown up. She was even bored with watching children playing in the boring Bahutakawa tree in the boring park across the boring road. She was bored. On her sixth birthday, Penelope's mum gave her a brightly wrapped present with the biggest bow Penelope had ever seen. Grabbing the present, she sat on the floor to open it. Untying the bow and peeling back the pink paper, she found... Boring books! Oh no! What are these for? she asked with her nose screwed up. To read, of course, Penny Pop, said her mum. I don't want to read. Reading is... Boring! Is reading boring? No, it's not, is it? It's fantastic! Penelope Popple did not like reading. Reading meant sitting still. Reading meant she didn't get to use her tablet. Reading meant having to sound out words. Boring! She turned to watch the children playing in the Pahutakawa tree across the road. Still boring, she said. That night, Penelope's mum asked which story she would like to read. I'm not a baby, said Penelope, showing her best grown-up face. Only babies read books. Penelope's mum smiled, quietly put the books down, turned off the light and closed the door with a click. Just as Penelope was about to fall asleep, there was a rustling sound next to her. She turned on the light. It was coming from the books. Wow! Carefully, she opened the first book. Immediately, a fierce wind and rain tore through her room, throwing furniture and toys around. Even her stuffed pink pig flew through the air. It rained harder and harder until there was an ocean around her. Out of the waves soared a mighty pirate ship, complete with a pirate. Ah, said the pirate, I'm One-Eyed Jack, with a beard down to my knees. If you pick me, we'll say, ah, and we'll sail the seven seas. Just as the water reached her toes, Penelope closed the book and the water disappeared. Her room returned to normal, and there was no sign of the pirate or his pirate ship. With pillows and toys around her to stop the water, she opened the book again and started reading. Soon, Penelope was asleep. She dreamt of pirates, treasure, palm trees and beaches, pirates with long beards, parrots and breeches. The next day, when Penelope was on her tablet, she could hear the children laughing and playing in the tree across the road. Boring! she said, even though something looked different about the Pahutakawa tree. Can you see something different? That night, as Penelope was about to fall asleep, there was a rustling next to her again. This time, Penelope picked up the second book and opened it. Trees burst through the floorboards and grew so tall she couldn't see their tops. A stream alongside a path wove through the trees until it came to a castle. Inside she saw a king and a queen, a knight on a white horse, and a tower with a beautiful princess at the top. If you don't read my story, I may never be found, said the princess, with hair that reached to the ground. Suddenly, a red dragon rose from behind the castle with giant wings and fire coming out of its mouth. Whoa! Penelope closed the book before the dragon's fiery breath singed her bed. 
Then the dragon, the castle, the trees and the stream were gone. Slowly she opened the book again and began reading from its singed pages. Soon Penelope was asleep. She dreamed of castles, dragons, princes and crowns, and balls and dancing in beautiful gowns. The next day, Penelope and her mum ate lunch in the park watching the children playing in the Putakawa tree. Boring, she said, quieter than the day before. But as she took a bite of her sandwich, she thought she saw something high in the tree. Something red that looked like a dragon. Cool. That night as Penelope was about to fall asleep, she heard a rustling next to her. This time, she eagerly opened the next book. Bam! There in the middle of the room stood a woman with a glowing wand. Who are you? asked Penelope. Why, I'm your fairy godmother, she said. Where are your shoes? My shoes? Penelope looked at her bare feet as her fairy godmother waved her wand in the air. Out of a whirlwind of pink and white sparkles trotted two white horses with huge feathers on their heads. Behind them was a beautiful carriage with two smartly dressed footmen high in the driver's seat. Are we going somewhere? asked Penelope. Only if you read this story, and you'd better read it fast, there'll be whirling gowns and glittering crowns and shoes made of glass. With a clomping of hooves, a poof and a puff, the carriage was gone and the book was shut. Penelope grinned, threw open the book and started reading. That night Penelope dreamed of carriages from pumpkins and horses from mice, of a prince with a glass slipper and everything nice. The next day Penelope ate her lunch a little closer to the Pahutakawa tree. A boy and his mother walked up to the tree, close to where Penelope was sitting. Why don't you play with the other children, said the boy's mother. They're having so much fun. Uh, it's just a tree, he said. Boring. Penelope looked up at the tree and smiled as a dragon landed in the very top branch. That's not a tree, Penelope said to the boy. It's really a castle. Can you see it? The boy's eyes grew wide with excitement. Yes, he said. I think I can. With that, they ran to play with the other children. They had so much fun that they decided that tomorrow the giant Bahutakawa tree would be a pirate ship. Ah, they said. From that day on, Penelope never thought books were boring again. And that's the end of the story. Wow, that tree came to life with her imagination and with the help of stories, of books. If you'd like to find out more about Penelope Popple and the boring books, I'll put a link down below to my next website. And if you'd like to come back for another boring book, <laughs> I'd love to have you join me. Come and visit me again soon, my friend. Kakite. Ka